So what's interesting about these waters here are all the different fish. Literally, I throw my net out in one direction, nothing. Throw it another, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I catch groups of 15, 20, five, just depends. But we've got here little sticklebacks, little blue sticklebacks. And uh, it looks like we've got quite a few of them. They're probably traveling together. We've also got some more largemouth bass. And in our critter keeper, don't worry, I'll put those other guys back in just a moment. We've got a good amount of the largemouth bass. That one doesn't look so happy. And then we've got some of the mottled or banded sculpin. And uh, yeah, so let's get that guy back in the water quick before he's not doing well. And uh, in fact, all these guys will go back in in just a moment. But pretty cool looking uh, little bass. Nothing unusual, but considering we're catching bass, sculpin, and uh, all these little sticklebacks, we'll get them together. We'll put the, the unhealthy one, we'll get him back in the water, this guy. And uh, we'll get these guys back in the water too. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living in your aquarium or rather on your interurban trail oh beautiful day out we're going to be exploring the sammamish slough today which runs right underneath the freeway runs under i-90 in uh, bellevue washington and believe it or not last year we found the spawning grounds of several different fish right in this area and look at all that hydrocaudal down there all that money wart or penny wart whatever you want to call it tons of it and they dredge this out for shipping uh, lumber mostly in the 1800s and then they've kept it clear for industry but also now recreation and it goes all the way from Lake Washington into the heart of Bellevue around the courthouse where it gets real shallow and muddy you can see there's quite a few uh, aquatic plants down there we'll have to check out what's growing other than uh, the obvious uh, duckweed and hydrocaudal and uh, you know uh, persicaria maculosa and the norm around here uh, but this channel continues for several miles and we're going to go to the very shallowest point of it and we're also going to check here, which is near where it feeds to the mouth of Lake Washington. And remember, that's a 30 mile long lake, uh, give or take, that also connects to Lake Union and then the salt water. So we should have some interesting fish today uh, if everything goes to plan and we uh, find the spot where Lawrence Kent and I were collecting last year. So what's interesting about these waters here are all the different fish. Literally, I throw my net out in one direction, nothing. Throw it another, nothing, nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I catch groups of 15, 20, five, just depends. But we've got here little sticklebacks, little blue sticklebacks. And uh, it looks like we've got quite a few of them. They're probably traveling together. We've also got some more largemouth bass. And in our critter keeper don't worry I'll put those other guys back in just a moment we've got a good amount of the largemouth bass that one doesn't look so happy and then we've got some of the mottled or banded sculpin and uh, yeah so let's get that guy back in the water quick before he's not doing well and uh, in fact all these guys will go back in in just a moment but Pretty cool looking uh, little bass, nothing unusual, but considering we're catching bass, sculpin, and uh, all these little sticklebacks, we'll get them together, we'll put the, the unhealthy one, we'll get him back in the water, this guy, and uh, we'll get these guys back in the water too. All right guys, so this is a pumpkin seed fish, pretty much full grown, about five inches, four inches, and it looks to be a male guarding a nest or at least guarding a region, he's not in spawning colors or he'd have all red on the belly in these parts. 
and you can tell he's a pumpkin seed fish by that little red dot on the black ear dot see the red everything else is pretty cryptic on these guys it can change with them being hybridized and so forth but this is what I've been talking about and wanting to catch you guys with my net a real specimen that has the blues and the discus patterns that we see now imagine this fish with all the iridescence imagine the red instead of the dark brown and that is what they look like spawning in this little body of water it is quite incredible and I really don't know why they're not kept more often in aquaria they are just a beautiful fish and they're so overlooked because they're so common in the United States and this guy's even stressed this guy's not happy to be in here so he's even stressed and he's still this beautiful so imagine when they're just tranquil in the morning feeding on bugs and guarding their little nest trying to attract a female boy they get so colorful now you have to be careful of the spines but other than that they are a pretty straightforward fish similar to a bluegill a lot of people around here don't know the difference and they just call these bluegill but bluegill will get three to five times bigger depending on the strain and the the body of water but yeah here we have a pumpkin seed fish not originally from the pacific northwest right where we are exactly but they are uh, or they have been here over a hundred years now and they are native to the u.s and similar biomes so close enough they don't seem to have hurt anything uh, and they seem to fit in well with the the local biome pretty cool let's see what else we can find so here we have a beautiful little bluegill i don't know if you guys can see the color in it but uh you can see its ear spot and uh beyond that it has some injuries and or bacterial infections and that's something I like to point out because most fish are not pristine when you catch them in the wild especially small little uh, predator fish or <laughs> prey fish and uh, these guys have a really nice color around here I don't know if they're mixed with rock bass or what it is um, but they're very blue and I know they're called bluegills I get that but um, these ones in particular this is it's getting near dark that's the sun has well set and uh, they still have that blue color a lot of times they have that H on the side too which I think is kind of funny it kind of looks like it's spelling hi um, twice hi hi uh, but they're a feisty fish fight pretty good and um, yet not a lot of people around here go for them in fact almost everybody throws them back but here we have you know a nice size bluegill all right guys so here we have a uh standard rock bass and these guys are kind of fun uh as juveniles because they have stripes and look like a little tiger but as they get older they turn green and yellow and silver and kind of goldish co colors you can tell them apart from the other fish in the leposoma uh, genus because they have a red color to the brown uh, iris part of their eye it's a little hard to see tonight uh, let's see if we can yeah there we go now you guys can see it so there you can see the burgundy part of the eye um, and that helps you tell them apart now their fins are generally kind of a yellow to green or olive color and then their belly is usually white with a lateral line that's uninterrupted that's arced and goes all the way back to the caudal peduncle and uh, a dorsal fin that's kind of curved on the males uh, a little more than on the females now the males also get a bit of a bump on their nose generally like this guy uh, but they still have the little ear mark see that black dot there that we call the ear on these just like a bluegill or like a pumpkin seed fish or whatnot and they are known to hybridize quite vigorously with other uh, species in the uh, sunfish grouping now these ones happen to be native to our state uh, whereas the pumpkin seeds and the 
smallmouth bass, largemouth bass are not. But uh, these ones, you could see where they're a pretty attractive fish. They, they get to around a pound to three pounds at very max. And uh, they are kind of a golden color in this lake, um, more so than, than in Lake Washington and elsewhere, where I've shown you guys these before. So uh, you can see he's got kind of a circle marking on his side too. Uh, you can kind of see interesting patterns almost looks like the number six or something So I always like to just document them and then uh, put them back in the water But another friendly fisherman here caught this guy and uh, Let me film him and take a couple pictures before we put him back into the lake All right, so here we have the largemouth bass. We have a little stickleback three spine stickleback there couple of them uh, there's some really young ones they definitely will get tossed back and then this looks like a banded uh, sculpin or a modeled sculpin I can't tell for sure there's only a few in the Northwest like five or so but they all look pretty similar and it's hard without counting all the rays and all that so I'll take some pictures and find out for sure but so far we're catching uh, as many as we want of the sculpin the stickleback and the bass uh, which doesn't surprise me here. I'm surprised there aren't any smallmouth bass or pumpkin seed fish here, but they're probably bathing in the sun uh, already since it was cold last night. But let's keep trying for some catfish or, or uh, a top minnow of some sign, uh, dojo loaches, whatever it might be. Something pretty, something bigger. I'll probably try my rod for a little while and uh, see what happens. All right, so pardon the first part of this that's gonna be loud with rush hour starting and uh, people driving to Seattle, but here we are underneath I-90, which it goes all the way to Chicago, basically, and you can see a very typical secondary growth uh, watershed slash wetland uh, in the Northwest. There's all sorts of ferns, all sorts of uh, moss growing and uh, immersed growth of plants and lots of newts, frogs, and tadpoles moving down in the water there. Uh, we're going to keep going though. Uh, you can see that duckweed has made it and uh, azola also have made themselves present as well as a lot of invasive ivies and decorative plants. But this whole area is going to be full of water this year. Unlike last year, it was very dry. This year, we've got three times more water. And so we're looking at um, a lot of new spots that could potentially hold all sorts of interesting stuff underneath the freeway here and then out um, kind of in this area that I guess a long time ago was deemed kind of unbuildable swamp land, which is the best kind of land, right? So, I'm gonna continue walking. I'll stop and let you guys know if anything amazing happens. But uh, we got a ways to go before we get uh, over to the lake by those uh, that tree line way down there uh, on the other side of the freeway that you see. Okay, so obviously you don't wanna step on that, but I can only come to one conclusion. There's deer hoofs footprints all over here the deer are using drugs all right so this guy was skittering by in the shallows he almost looks more like a you know something like a, a northern pike minnow when they're young but he, i don't think he is he's not a sucker mouth but look at the size of his pectoral fins they're very large and i'm curious if this is one of those bar boats um i am noticing he's got He's got no adipus fin, uh, which would be between the back fin and the tail fin, the tail fin and the uh, dorsal fin. And he also has uh, that stripe down the side, which is common in so many species. But <clears throat> again, he's got all yellow and green color to his fins with kind of orange on his tail and uh, no rainbow shimmer just olive green and different color greens on him so I'll have to ID like I said these when I get home because um, I, I really just don't know what I'm dealing with in this water with fry not for sure anyways so we'll get a for sure ID soon when we get back 
kind of interesting. You can actually see them eating the algae and debris off the bottom with their little sucker mouth. Uh, so these guys might hold up well in the aquaria. I don't know. They seem very happy to just be in this little container. I'm still going to let everything we catch go today. Uh, but you can see they're actually eating right here. They're, they're that calm and, and collected already, even after five minutes of being collected. Nyuk, 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 nyuk. Puns, right guys, puns? So I'm gonna keep at it, then we're gonna move spots. We're gonna move down to the next bulkhead and I'll let you know if I find anything new. So here we got a bigger sculpin, which lets me see that it's probably the banded sculpin with the stripes on it. But this guy's much more of a adult and he's got the grumpy bulldog face and uh of course he's got the pectoral spininess but uh he'll these are everywhere in our waters and they're a really important food source for trout and salmon and so uh we're definitely going to put him back uh they don't do so well in aquaria from what i've noticed um unless you've got really cold water they really don't seem to like the warm, uh, shallow water uh, of summer even. So let's let this guy back into the water, into the muddy little tributary that he came from. And uh, we'll keep trying for a catfish or perch or something, something beautiful or something spiny, one or the other. Here we are at the last spot of the day. I'm gonna do two-handed scoops because uh, the, <laughs> The mosquitoes are literally breathing in. They're so thick here, driving me insane. Even though I've got a hoodie and socks and shorts, I mean, they just land and try to bite through the clothing. But I'm gonna try some of these areas where it looks like something surfaced, either turtles or frogs or fish, something is coming up and surfacing, clearing a little hole. And then we'll go up on the bridge. If I see anything cool, I'll let you know. But thanks for joining me this morning on this little outing and uh if we find anything awesome you guys are gonna know about it in just a moment if not thanks for watching all right guys so here we are at bellevue in the city center kind of like the town hall i guess whatever you want to call it it's where the courthouse and uh dol kind of stuff is but what's interesting is they built it on the center of a slough so basically an island or it's it's in a peninsula the slough comes out and around and they put everything on the slough so because of that look at what's happening under all the buildings right next to them even into the parking lot look at the ground it's all settling and flooded and i can see frogs and tadpoles and, and other things but i'm going to look for some immersed plants look for some fish and I don't know what the status is of doing that legally here, but uh, it's just funny to me that this is like the richest town in the area and uh, they put all their courthouse and administrative stuff in a sinkhole, basically. <laughs> all right, let's take a look around too. All right, so here we are at another building and there are all sorts of little frogs, tadpoles, newts, things like that swimming around here. You can even see where the path is eroding and there's some sort of like little sprinkler pipe or something uh, from where the turtles and ducks and things are getting out. In fact, there are actually uh, little fish swimming right here in the water with those little water skippers. And uh, I'm interested what's trapped in here, let alone, look at this, underneath the courthouse building, there's literally a lake under the courthouse. Whoever built that, I don't know, trying to be one with nature or something, went a little too far, I think. But we're going to see what we find in this literal puddle, literal puddle and little puddle. I don't know. I'm curious if any fish are trapped in here would dry up probably in the next few weeks. But again, look at all this hydrocotyle, hydrocotyle. Very crazy. All right. So, of course, what do I have? Two... Loaches going berserk crazy around in a bottle. So I did catch two more loaches very very small or average size But uh got to get out of here because the mosquitoes have just eaten my my hands up. I mean 
Oh, I'm going to have welts all over my face too. And I suited up and everything. No match for literally hundreds at a time. Haven't seen that since I was in Montana in spring. Jeez. Woo. All right, guys. Well, I'm signing off. Thanks for coming with me. This one really did take some blood and sweat. No tears, though. No tears. Thanks for watching. If you could hit the like on the way out, I'd greatly appreciate it. Bye-bye.